when the apostles sing and then you say but why is the apostle singing why doesn't he keep to his preaching and praying we are the people supposed to do the singing well when you come to do your singing no door will open but when you agree when you understand when you know that we are following the bible that this is bible church it's not a kind of you know all these uh, new generational church bible church and we do what they did in bible times then we're going to have the resort and we're going to have the miracle and the outbreak the open door they had in bible times we're going to have it i said we're going to have it i'm dividing the message to three points number one the power of prayer and praise before deliverance not after deliverance the power of prayer and praise the power of prayer and praise before deliverance number two the pursuit of passionate preaching the pursuit of passionate passionate preaching after deliverance number three the peril of perpetual prisoners after deliverance the peril of the people that remain in a day when god is outpouring pouring out a spirit pouring out his power pouring out the anointing and breaking yokes and destroying the works of the devil at such a time and in such a day some people still remain bound i pray it will not happen to you i said it will not happen to you i pray that this day of his power and this day of his authority and this day of open doors and this day of spontaneous miracle instant miracle i pray you receive your own and you'll come out of every bondage in jesus name we're looking at number one now number one is the power of prayer and praise before deliverance anybody can sing after the miracle has happened anybody can jump after the miracle has happened anybody can shout anybody can clap after the miracle has happened before it happens when your feet are still in the stores when the sickness is still there when the imprisonment appears biting and terrible and when evil men are waxing worse and worse when the problems are increasing when you can sing that, that that's what brings miracle not after but before let's look at that again i'm reading from verse 24 it says who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks and at midnight the midnight of suffering at midnight the midnight of pressure at midnight the midnight of persecution at midnight when the forces of the magistrates were brought to bear upon them and they felt the pain they felt the agony at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard the prisoners were sleeping and they didn't worry about when they hear to wake them up that's a good thing to wake people up prayer and singing to wake people up shouting the praises of the lord singing the praises of the lord to wake people up that's a good thing and then it says and suddenly there was a great earthquake it was the singing was before that earthquake the singing was before the opening of the door the singing was before the deliverance and then it says so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately and everyone's bands were loosed i want you to look at first chronicles second chronicles rather singing praying praising the lord before the time of the miracle in second chronicles chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 3 here we're told about jehoshaphat Jehoshaphat had some challenges and a challenge that came upon him he even said what are we going to do 
this is perilous this is painful this is perplexing and we don't know what we're going to do it says in second chronicles chapter 20 verse 3 and joshua feared and he set himself to seek the lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all judah and judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the lord even out of all the cities of judah they came to seek the lord you know when there is trouble that's the time there should be unity that's the time there should be an ingathering of all the people united together it's a privilege to bring all the problems before the lord what a privilege that we have to be able to say oh lord what a special time that this heart ache here and this trouble here and this harassment of the devil here and these enemies that are walking and this failure here and this defeat over here we're bringing it to the lord with a united heart that's why it says and the whole of judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the lord and that's why we're here to ask help of the lord and that help we're going to get in jesus name look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says so our god will thou not judge them for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us neither know we what to do when you don't know what to do you can pray you can sing when you don't know what you do you can glorify the lord and say you are the god of all wisdom and the god of all might and the god of all power and then praise the glory the majesty of the lord when you don't know what to do singing will be a wonderful thing singing the praises of the lord singing the promises of the lord just taking out of the word of god and just singing look at the psalms and sings and look at the gospels and sing and look at your hymn book and see just see where you where you can't move forward or you can't move backward and you are hedged in and it appears you are saying what am i going to do i've never found a problem like this in my life i've never encountered something like this in my life this is terrible and this is peculiar what a time to live and when you are confused like that i will say what will i do where will i go who will bring the solution to me that is the time to do what paul and silas did and just to pray and to sing and when there's no helper around no prayer warrior around no supporter around nobody that understands you understands your problem nobody willing to give a helping hand that will be the time to pray and to sing the praises of the Lord. They said in verse 12, O Lord our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon the Lord. I said our eyes are upon the Lord. Take your eyes away from the enemy and take your eyes away from the detractors and say, Lord, my eyes are upon you and I know you're going to solve my problem and the Lord will solve the problem in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19, verse 19. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Kohites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high they stood up the problem was not solved yet the difficulties were not removed yet and all those large companies of mighty warriors against the people of god they were not beaten back yet and yet these people they rose up to shout and to sing the praise of the lord and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and, and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. How many people are believing the Lord our God today? Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. But you know, actions speak 
louder than words. If you believe the Lord, you'll not cry. If you believe the Lord, you'll not do anything to say, if God is getting late, I'm going to solve my problem. This if you believe the Lord, you're not going to run to the harbor. This if, you believe, if you believe the Lord, you're not going to run to those who are using powers of darkness. If you believe the Lord, you're not going to run, run to those false prophets. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, prophets. If you believe the Lord, you're not going to go to those who are burning their candle and, you know, burning their incense. If you believe the Lord, you're not saying this is getting off hands. I need to do something now. If you believe the Lord, if you are going to have solution to your problem, all the things that are contrary to God, contrary to the way of righteousness, all those things you abandon, you reject, you run away from. And then it says, and so shall ye be established. You'll be established in Jesus' name. And believe his prophets. And believe his prophets. Two things. Number one. What's number one? Believe the Lord. Everybody tell me. What's number one? Tell me again. Tell me. Believe the Lord. What's number two? What's number two? What's number two? Believe his prophets. And so shall ye prosper. Hey, you, you know, there are some people that think that, I think I said it many, many years ago. If I were not the pastor in the church, it would be easy for me to call everybody and say, Hey, come on, believe the pastor and believe the prophet. If I were not the pastor, it would be easy for me to say, Hey, everything you hear from the pastor, take it in. If he just, even if he winks with the eye or shakes your hand or whatever he does, when he preaches the word, when the anointing comes upon him and he says, Thus says the Lord, believe the prophet. But, well, I happen to be the pastor. I still need to preach the word of God and tell you that when you believe the prophet, you are going to prosper. I said, You are going to prosper. Now, if we believe the prophet, you're not going to talk to the prophet like Pharaoh talked to Moses. He didn't believe the prophet. If you believe the prophet, you're not going to do what Potiphar did to Joseph. If you believe the prophet, you're not going to do what the Canaanites did to Joshua. If you believe the prophet, you're going to soak in the word, accept the word. Well, if you don't believe your, the prophet, the prophet will still prophesy. But you will miss the benefit of the prophecy. I pray you'll not miss it in Jesus' name. That's why the word of God says that you remember those that have the rule over you. Who preach the word unto you. They are the prophets of God. They are the servants of the Lord. And what they tell you is for your good. It's to prepare you for heaven. Believe the Lord your God you'll be established in Jesus' name and believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper and when they had consulted with the people he appointed who did he appoint? I said who did he appoint? singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord the Lord sent ambushment against the children of Ammon and then the children of Moab and then of Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were, tell me the word, smitten. They were smitten because they sang and they praised the Lord before the deliverance. Before the deliverance. Before the deliverance. And then the deliverance came because with joy in their heart, with faith in their heart, they sang praises to the Lord and the victory came your victory has come i said your victory has come that is when you believe the lord your god that is when you believe his prophets 
that he is when in the midst of the trouble in the midnight of persecution and pain and pressure when in that situation you sing unto the lord forget the problem and sing unto the lord good things will happen to you and mighty things will happen to you in jesus name now we're coming back to acts chapter 16 acts chapter 16 point number two the pursuit of passionate preaching the pursuit of passionate preaching after deliverance you understand what has taken place in Acts chapter 16 verse 26 Acts chapter 16 verse 26 and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately all the doors were open how many doors were open how many doors were open and then it says and everyone's bands or lose verse 27 and the keeper of the prison awaking out of sleep the keeper of the prison awaking out of sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out a sword and he would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled you must uh, understand as you read your Bible how many things happen to many people. And there's a word here, a word you need to take to heart. Supposing, 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 and that supposition would have killed him. That supposition would have sent him to a premature grave death that supposition could have landed him in hell and he could have been in hell forever because he supposed he thought he had not checked up he just woke up suddenly and supposing all the prisoners had fled because of the open doors then he wanted to kill himself you know that many things in life that happen negatively to you is based on supposition. You know that many negative actions you take in life against yourself to hinder your own progress, to cut short your own success. And you know many things that happen to you in life, even people that commit suicide is the supposition 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 supposing all the prisoners were fled and then he began to sing if all the prisoners had gone they will take me and they will judge me as being careless or they're going to judge me as colluding with them and then i made this to happen and before they kill me let me kill myself i want you to examine your life today what many things are you supposing about your life, about people, about things around you that you have not checked up? And it's a supposition that is killing many people today. I pray the Lord will deliver us from that in Jesus' name. You know, in relationship, husband and wife, supposition, supposition can kill that marriage. Between parents and children, supposition can kill the affection in that family. Between parents and children, supposition between a pastor and the members of the church supposition supposing the pastor is planning this and supposing the members are planning this supposition makes you to go ahead and kill some good projects of the church supposition can bring death but then we're told in verse 28 but paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here your supposition is wrong and many suppositions are like that they are wrong and sometimes when we're supposing we close our ears we don't even know when paul is talking we don't know when the messenger of life and light and hope when they are talking because our suppositions block our ears our suppositions close our eyes our suppositions blindfold us but then it says 